Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, you, you really see me wearing this, man. When I wear this, it means I'm on fire, man. <laughs> and you're probably, you're probably asking why I'm on fire. Well, let me sing a short song before I introduce my guest. One of my favorite all-time songs, even to date, when I hear the song, then something comes into me. This song puts me on fire. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Mama, mama, come with me, taco. Come with me, talk about Barack Obama. Papa, papa, come with me, taco. I like the tack, eh? Come with me, talk about Barack, Barack. Barack All right. And on that note, the man behind the song, shouts of love for my man, Black Rasta. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Black Rasta. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a seat, man. Thank you. Welcome to the creek. Wow, it's a wonderful creek. It is, eh? I would like to live here the rest of my life. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> Black Rasta is in the house. We're going to take a short break, commercial break. When we come back, we'll be right back. The KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back. And I told you why I'm excited today, man. I have in the house Black Rasta. Rasta, welcome again, man. Thank you so much. It's so, so much. good to have you back. Oh my God, it's my pleasure. Wow. The first my time pleasure. we talked was about seven years ago. Yes, about seven years ago. Wow. Oh, time flies. Time flies. Yes, 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 yes. yes and you're yes. back again, man. And I'm glad we have a new setting. Thank this you. This is heavenly. It is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a reason to visit Cactus Creek now, man. Black Rasta says it's heavenly. All right. Black Rasta, have you been, man? Well, I've been good. I've been cool, running around the world, doing a lot of different things. Yeah. People did not expect that we could do. We're still running around, giving people the reason to live mm -hmm. and to have hope for a brighter future. Mm -hmm. Let me go back, not too far back. Yes. I'm, I'm a small rewind. Yes. You, you, you said one time that the parliamentarians, did you say the parliamentarians are on ganja or something? <laughs> <laughs> you got you in trouble. I remember something. I yeah. want to start from there. Yeah. Well, I was on radio. I mean, and then I said, well, it was uh, April uh, 20th. Yes, 420. They call it World Marijuana Day. Okay. So my radio station called me and said, well, Black Rasta is World Marijuana Day. What do you have to say? I said, oh... It's too long. Ghana has to legalize this marijuana thing. The parliamentarians who are making the laws, about 80% of them are smoking this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Allow it to grow, you know. And that was it. And that was Standing it. Then in a person and it <laughs> I, became a big they, issue. They hold you to parliament, oh, right? Yes, they did. That was at the did. disciplinary committee, some committee. Yes, yeah, some committee for, you know, priv they call it privileges. Privilege committee. committee. Yes. So you, you, you're you supposed <laughs> to go and appear there. Yes. Tell me about it, man. Well, I appeared there. I got there and my lawyer was also there. Tell you, sorry, big up yourself wherever you are. And then he spoke. I was asked, why did you say this? I said, listen. When we are on radio, we are controlled by spirits. <laughs> when we are on radio, we are on, <laughs> on fire. You know? Yes. I mean, what I truly wanted to say was that, not necessarily smoking, but about 80% of all of you, including me, we use marijuana in one way or the other. The smoking was a slip of tongue. That's right. And then they said, oh, all right, if this is it, then... Uh, Go and see no more. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so glad that a few years down the line, I am alive and I've seen that the same thing for which I was hauled to the Parliament House for has been legalized there for medicinal go. purposes. So I'm hoping that the Parliament would invite me again. And this time around, they would all stand up and salute me and say, you fought a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm looking up to. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You said it. Yes, I did. And they did. should salute you. Yeah, they should. They the should are you listening to this? Don't hold him for any this thing. These are just mere facts. Eh? Oh, but Charlie, it's good, to, it's good to have you back. Yes. So and you went off radio for a while. I remember yes. then you, you, yes. you went off for what, two years? Uh, two and a half years, yes, two and a half right, years. you are right. Ah, wow, well, you've been following, yes, two and a half years. I was off, you know, I felt betrayed. 
because um, I remember when the parliament said, hey, Black Rasta, come. My radio station started shivering and, you know, I didn't get the support that I expected. Mm. And I was the major pilot of the radio station. And I expected that a pilot sometimes gets caught in the turbulences. And when you are caught in the turbulences, you don't have to let the plane off. You have to pilot, pilot it plane. out of the turbulence. Yeah. But my radio station seemed to try to abandon me. That's so, how you felt, huh? Yes, yes, that's how I felt. And that was the reality. They did not give me a lawyer. There was nothing. They just pushed me to go there and face the parliamentarians. And my lawyer, Tadio Sori, called me and said, Hey, listen, man, I'm going to represent you. Let's go. So we went there, and when they realized that we had gone over the turbulences, the storm had been weathered, then they now came with their tails between their legs. Oh, you know, uh, it was uh, nothing. But uh, that was the day I sent in my resignation. In wow. fact, that very day, it was a two-line resignation. I sent it to them and I said, yeah, I'm gone. And interestingly, in Parliament, the Speaker of Parliament at that time, he said, you see this guy standing there? I am his biggest fan. And anybody can go online and check what the Speaker of Parliament said. I am his biggest fan. Wow. I listened to him religiously. 2015, this was August. That's what he said. And the whole parliament house was cold. Wow. I remember when he said, okay, put up your hands, those who want us to punish him. I turned around and about 80% again had their hands up. <laughs> My Lord. I mean, some of the parliamentarians were even like, oh, get away. Your dressing is very poor. Bad dressing. Don't pass here. Some even strike their legs, you know, trying to, I mean, <laughs> make me fall or something. But the speaker of parliament said, okay, I veto it. Go and see no more. And that left to the parliamentarians <laughs> alone, something else should have happened. Wow. At that time, at wow. least. And, wow. Well, yes, I was away for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. and were you the, teaching? Did I hear you were teaching oh, abroad? Ah, uh, you followed the thing. <laughs> you make me feel important. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you I was in America. Yeah. In fact, I went to the University of Central Missouri, where I was teaching four different disciplines. Really? I taught African history. I taught religions. I taught environmental sciences. Oh, my God. And at the same time, I also taught a bit of African history at the University of Central Missouri. From there, I went to the University of North Carolina, where I had a very short stint. In fact, the University of Central Missouri wanted me to stay on as a permanent lecturer. But uh, I didn't feel the vibration inside me. Mm. I felt that I had left a tattered country mm. and I needed to come home and be part of the building of that tattered country. Wow. I did not want to stay. The money was good, yes. I mean, these are naked facts that anybody can check. I had to leave and then come back. And to God be the glory, when I returned, uh, I found myself at Xylophone FM. And I think that the journey has continued. Yes. Wow. wow. I mean, when I was at University of Central Missouri, I remember some journalists from Ghana wrote to the school to find out if Black Rasta was actually teaching there. Some bloggers even wrote that, ah, was Black Rasta teaching marijuana studies there? <laughs> Me trying to ridicule the whole thing. Yeah. They had forgotten that I have a pile of degrees that I've thrown under my bed to catch dust. Some wow. people pride themselves in degrees, but that to me is not a pedigree. For me, a degree is just to show people that, yes, what you value, I got it here, but I value something else. Mm. For me, that was what it is. And uh, I don't go around bragging that I have this degree, I have that. I rather brag and boast of the fact that I am able to convert one, two, three, four, five youth who have left their bad ways and have come to become patriotic and good citizens of this country. That's what I pride myself in. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because I, I, I don't have a degree in land economy. Yes, yes, I do. And oil and gas. Yes, oil. Oh, wow. Yes, I have a degree in oil and gas as well. And I'm doing a PhD right wow. now. But the degree is not your pedigree. It's How not do you pedigree. pedigree. No, it's not. It's not at all. It's not. What I pride myself in is the fact that I want to see the youth move away from all the wickedness, all the things that they, they want the politicians to, uh, the politicians want them to suffer from. That's what I want them to come out of so that we'll have a better country. Mm, mm. Yes.
Let me ask you one question about the youth before we, there's so much to talk about, yeah. you know. But you know how this country sadly has been so polarized, but along two party lines, you know, MPP or NDC, you know. And that to me is the bane of our underdevelopment, this, this strong partis, you know, partisan thing. Sadly for me, the youth that are coming, that I was hoping will come up with a different thought, a different mindset to boycott this polarization. Also growing up in the same thing, you know, the same, what, what, what's your take on that? That is it. In fact, some of the younger people that we thought will come into the government and be able to make it better. Because the Bible says that, yes, God is calling upon the youth because the youth are strong. They are the same youth who get into politics right now and are corrupted by the same old, sickly, dying old men who are in power and refusing to fall. I love old men, I love old women, but when you are old, there is a place that is reserved for you where you become a greedy old man and you continue being in power. It is a shame. How do you feel when you come out from your high horse, come down from it, and then you go out there and then little boys who are supposed to be your grandchildren are not in employment and you have to remit them for mm. me i think mm. that it is very sad mm. old men and women are supposed to give us wisdom they're supposed to call us and tell us you are running too much but when they themselves get onto the race horse and try to run the race then there's a big calls for alarm mm. Mm. yes mm. that's my problem you, you see it's like a canker until you treat that canker mm. Any other thing that you put on top of the canker is broken. Mm. It's also caught into mm. it. Mm. It's but like yeah. old wine in new bottles. Yeah. That's what it is. For me, the troubling part is this. That regardless of this, about 70 plus percentage of the voting population are the youth. Yes. So what does that say? Is that the youth, we have a... You, no, I say we, I forgot I'm an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> then the youth, you, you have a better appreciation of the, of the old folks because it's the youth that are, that are responsible yeah. for whatever is happening up top. Yeah. How do you react to that? Yes, you are right. I mean, Africa is the most youthful continent. If the youth are the future, it means Africa is the future. No two ways about that. Now, in our country, the youth form the majority but the youth are the most sidelined. The youth are those who are taking all the brunt of all these people who are refusing to give the youth the chance to survive. The lies, the tricks, the stealing, the robbery, the begging, all these things. The youth are growing up in a certain culture which is cyclical. Mm. The same old problems that we have been having, these are the same until there is a change in attitude. Attitude that, remember on the day of the independence of this country, Nkrumah told the people straight away that we must now change our attitudes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nkrumah said it. I wasn't there. I wasn't alive then. But that was what Nkrumah said. At least we heard it on tape. The attitude of the Ghanaian has always been a problem. Sometimes I sit back, KSM, and I wonder, where is this country going? All the youth are so much interested in quick money. They either go to church and drink holy water or they are running after some fetish priest or priestess who wants to double something mm. and the whole country mm. sits back like mummies watching what is going to happen mm. next. Mm. And it is so sad. These youth are the people who are supposed to lead this generation. And this, if this is the kind of teaching you are giving them, then it is sad. Mm. Mm. And I agree with you perfectly. The thing I will add to this is this. The youth look up to the generation that came before them. Okay, and the generation that they're looking up to are the ones that are teaching them these things. Exactly, exactly. And it is, it, is, it is so sad. That is why I dedicate a lot of my time on radio to address the youth. I always tell them it's like the Titanic. The poor people in the Titanic were the first to feel the impact of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. They were those who were shouting and crying. Whilst the bourgeoisies were on top there listening to jazz music and still having fun. When the ship started sinking, it was the poor people who started dying. A lot of the rich old men 
were able to get their way out because they were in first class and by the loss of the ship, they had to be evacuated first. Before it came to their turn, they had all sunk into the at sea. So the youth right now must understand that this is that movement. And I'm so glad that a lot of these youth are picking it up. They are picking it up and getting to know that, hey, this is very terrible. The pe these people don't mean any good for us. All they think about is the next election. None of these politicians is thinking about where is the nation moving to. They are only thinking about how do we win the next election. Now we are hearing about breaking the eight. They are not talking about dealing with doomso doomso. They are not thinking about the water problems that we have. They are not thinking about streetism. They are not thinking about the schools that are located behind rivers. People have to wade through these rivers and all that. So I sit back and I, I'm like, ah, are these human beings? They are only thinking about how they can hold on to power. And that the institutions are dead. I cannot walk into any institution and say, hey, I want to find this or I want to do this, I want to do that. I must be sent by a certain pot-bellied big man. Mm -hmm. And he would call them and tell them, hey, deal with this person because this is this person I, I want you to handle. And when you check these things out, they make you crazy. Where is the country going? Where are we going? The people who were making so much noise. Yes, this country is bad. We want to change it. We want to make it better. Blah, blah. Boom, 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 boom. They are the same people who are going to... You said Mahama was very, uh, what, corrupt. You came in. What have you done about that corruption? Have you been able to haul him to court? But you have the time to go to court and fight for election results. You don't have the time to deal with the poor man's problems. KSM. When I look at these things, I wish I had a magic wand that I would just point out like that, and the whole nation would become a new nation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Incidentally, it will have to go through some process yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. Your passion for the youth, your passion to see uh, that kind of dynamism, yeah? It's not only local because I you have some links with uh, Bobby, Bobby Wine oh, yeah, yeah. at, at yeah. Uganda for real. young for real yeah, yeah yeah well I think that I have a certain kind of grace that is uh, beautiful I love that grace there's no country I've ever gone to and I wish to meet the president and I didn't I was in Israel. The president was supposed to meet with the president. I went to Palestine that same day. I met with the president of Palestine. I think his name is Mahmoud Abbas. And anybody can check it out. You see the photograph of me and Mahmoud Abbas in Palestine. I, was, I met with Tabo Mbeki. I met with Mugabe. If Mugabe invited me to Zimbabwe to celebrate his 92nd anniversary. And when I went there, I performed three times. How did he hear about you? Good. I made a song for Mugabe about 11 years before he invited me over. And when he was celebrating his 92nd anniversary, he invited me over. I played at um, a festival they have there, I think they call it Zima, uh, Zimbabwean Music Awards. I performed you there. there. Yes, I did. I played there. And then I went to his office. I played for him. I played also for him in Machingo, a town called Machingo. Uh, where this birthday was celebrated. So I performed three solid times for Mugabe and he made me the tourism ambassador of Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> this is getting so exciting, folks. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, more of Black Rasta. Stick around, we'll be back. <laughs> The KSM show. I have a special message from Fresh Akono Coconut Oil. It is cholesterol free and fat free. And here's the deal there's a special offer for all KSM show lovers. Just call them and say, I saw this ad on the KSM show, and you'll be entitled to a big discount. Whether it's for you personally or whether you want a bulk supply, the name is Akono Fresh Coconut Oil. You can't miss it. The number is 024. 748-6673 or you can WhatsApp on 020-615-1378. Okay, folks, and don't forget, tomorrow is May Day. It's Workers Day. And I'm telling you, come with your family and your friends and let's have a ball at the Cactus Creek. Yeah.
We're back. We're back. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, I'm talking to Black Rasta. That's right. <laughs> so wow. So you three times Mugabe. Yes. So you had a one on one with him. Yes, one on one. And again, you know, this time is uh, the world of the internet. Just Google it. You will see my several photographs with Mugabe in his office and outside his office mm. and all that. In fact, he made me the tourism ambassador of the country and there are so many reports online, both in the Zimbabwean press mm. and the world press, mm. you would find that. And uh, I was supposed to be working for Zimbabwe and that again, some journalists had to call the Ghanaian Zimbabwean consulate to find out how it was possible for, for Zimbabwe to pick up another person from a different country wow. and make him a tourism ambassador of that country. And said Mugabe they is a call to verify. Yes, and they did. Ghana does that a lot, so it's good. I mean, when people do that, it, it stops a lot of people from lying. Mm -hmm. Especially now that they are giving fake degrees to so many different people. Recently, I heard somebody had four degrees in two days or something. <laughs> and those things, it, it, you know, I mean, when you go to school and sit down and rack your brains, and somebody gets four degrees in four days, KSM is a yes. cause for, you know, <laughs> so yes, Mugabe, wow. I enjoy and being have you in met? Zimbabwe. I met Barack Obama. Oh, Barack? Yes, I did. Wow. I met Barack Obama. So yeah. what, what, how did he hear you? Did he hear you? Somebody told him about your song. He'll, give me a little bit about it. Okay. So that was the very first song ever for Barack. It came out in November 2007. I remember that like yesterday. I remember I made the song and just brought it out. And within two days, it was already catching fire. We How played it on radio. Be, what inspired the song? Hey. Hey. <laughs> I had just finished an album, a whole album. I can't remember the title of the album now. I think it was called Nati Bongo. I have 10 albums now, so, mm, mm. you know. Uh, when I finished it, yeah, we released it, but it wasn't really catching fire. Mm. So I stood back a little bit. And then one day there was this guy on radio, I think it was called Kankam mm. on radio, GBC at that time, say, hey, there's a guy in America called Barack Obama who is doing some nice sport tricks here and there. He wants to be president, the first black president. The name sounded nice in my ears, Barack Obama. I just Googled a little bit about him. And then a, a song came ringing in my ears. Mama, mama, come make with taco. Come make we talk about Barack Obama. Papa, Papa, come make we talk. Come make we talk about Barack Obama. Barack, Barack, Barack Obama. Barack, Barack, Barack Obama. It sounded like a nursery rhyme. I forgot about it. There were two people in the room at that time. I asked them if it was a nice composition. I remember Ras Bumba, and he was like, well. <laughs> well, it was so soon. You know, I left it. So I, I was in town that day when Zap Mallet met me and said he, he had opened a new studio. I should come and record something. I was almost going to tell him, but I recorded a whole album in your studio. I haven't really benefited from this album. You want me to come record some more? Well, I went in there and that was it, KSM. That song took us just a few hours to finish. The following day, he mastered it. And my intention was just to release it so Ghanaians and the world would say, oh, the Pan-Africanist Black Rasta supported an African brother mm -hmm. who wanted to be mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And when it came out, within two days, taxi drivers were singing Everybody. it. Everybody. Everybody was singing it. Hey! And Kantamantu, at that time, started calling me for copies. So I was forced to release it as a single. And the money I made from Barack Obama May the good old days come again. <laughs> <laughs> Barack, Barack, Barack Obama. Barack, wow. Barack, Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Man, yeah. big time. Really? I remember <laughs> that same period. I was traveling to Holland. You know, I didn't have so much traveling experience. I got to Holland and they set my bag and realized there was so much money in there. They said, you're not supposed to travel with so much money. That was when Ghana had just changed this new, mm -hmm. you know. I said, well, I didn't know. I'm not coming to work. I'm just coming to spend some good time with you guys. Mm -hmm. They had to send me back because they, they felt that I was doing money laundering. 
But I was a young man. So they didn't let you enter Holland? No. You came back to Ghana? No, they sent me back to Ghana. And the, and the painful thing was I sat in front of the toilet on the plane all the way back to Ghana. And uh, there was this big woman, big woman. Almost every second she was coming into that toilet. <laughs> And every time she went in there, it was like an earthquake under my feet. <laughs> I would shiver, hold my nose up like this. The flight, which was supposed to last like six hours, to me was like 12 hours. 12 hours. Oh my goodness. When it finally touched down, I said, I'm going to give these people hell. They have disgraced me in their country. So I called the embassy and I told them, listen, you disgraced me. You sent me back like a common criminal. I'm going to arrange for one million you to come and demonstrate in front of your racist embassy. So the ambassador called me then. She was a woman at that time, very beautiful woman. Talked to me, explained a few things to me. Pam! They gave me another visa. Lentier one. And then it was a VIP one. Wow. When I arrived again, this time around, not even one question. They just said, enjoy your stay. Wow. <laughs> really? Oh yes. Oh yes. It sounds like fiction. But that was, that was what happened to me. When I went to Holland, they sent me back. Back to Ghana? Back to Ghana. In did, fact. Did the media pick it up and turn it into another story? Or fortunately, no, nobody it, picked it? Nobody picked it up. Mm. All it was was that they brought something written in Dutch and asked me to sign. I said, I don't understand the language. I said, oh, I will volunteer to read it to you. I said, I don't trust you. You don't trust me that I will enter a country and do good. Mm -hmm. You are telling me that you will translate what you have written. No, sir. I don't trust it. Yeah. They sent me back. And the records are there every time. You see? Yes, I came back. But I became a good friend of Holland. Mm -hmm. From that time, almost every year I was in Holland performing, doing oh, some so other performing things. performing there now. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I went for some performances, left, right, and center. Yeah, so... I think God has blessed me quite much. Mm -hmm, Obama mm -hmm. was interesting. Mm -hmm. I remember when he came, he asked me if I wanted a citizenship. He wanted you to be a citizen of America? Yes, of the US. Really? Yes, yes. He asked me if I wanted to. And I told him So that you I, met with him in Ghana? He oh called yeah, you for Oh, me. yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, when... But, and again, you can Google that. It is out there for everybody to see the photograph of me and Obama. <laughs> and the whole story that came out in 2009... Barack arrived in Ghana. At that time, they refused to allow me to meet with him because they said I talked too much and I didn't have common sense. Really? Yes, that was what they said. Atamiris was the president. Mahama was the right. vice president. I remember President Mahama called at that time and asked them to give me an invitation because it was obvious, KSM, that if Barack Obama was coming here, yeah. the man who made a lot yes. of Ghanaians know yes. Barack yes. should be there. But they were rather interested in a little boy who had long ears and looked like Obama. More than the one who made the song for Obama. In fact, I felt totally betrayed. I made a song that so many people said would not happen. It happened. We went through the thick and thin of the whole thing. When Obama was coming, they were now looking for an Obama look-alike to present to Obama. Wow. And they had some 12 year old or 13 year old boy with some big ears like that, like Obama. And that was the guy they were putting all over in the media. And Black Rasta was all of a sudden the talkative. But the hypocrisy of Ghanaians, when Obama arrived, right at the airport, I wasn't there, I was in Cape Coast. I had ambushed Obama because I had heard that he was coming Come to Cape, to Cape Coast. Coast. Yeah. So I was going to be there and jump on him when he <laughs> arrived in Cape Coast. So that I'll be in the news as the Ghanaian terrorist who hacked Obama by force. I was in Cape Coast there when I remember uh, Honorable Haruna Idrisu calling me. Black Rasta, where are you? Hurry up. Uh, Obama is asking of you. I said, oh, really? Right at the wow. airport, he was looking around, I was told to see a dreadlocked guy, but everybody was in coat and tie. <laughs> he was looking around, he couldn't say, he asked Mr. President, where is the young man who made the song for me? Then he also turned and asked those who were preventing me from coming. Wow. And they now said, oh, we have invited him, he's coming. So they were forced to present me. To God be the glory, Bafuboni just passed on. He played a very powerful role. Yes, yes, Babo. 
He called and told me that, hey, Black Rasta Obama is looking for you. Hurry up and come. When I arrived at the castle gate, in fact, they had stopped everybody from coming. They were closing the gate. But when they saw that I was approaching, there was a man called Victor Smith. Victor, yes. He was at the gate. The moment he saw me, he said, whoa, Black Rasta, come in. So I sneaked between those two gates and they started shooting. Po, 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 21 gun salute for Obama. So I was the last person to enter. And when Obama came in, I remember President Rawlings and his wife came in. Obama came in with Michelle. Once they came in like that, he was looking around, people were shaking hands. Then at the time, there were too many hands and he had to pull back and just stand up and do this. Then he looked and saw me sitting in the corner there with my long frock. I had been so tired from the Cape Coast, Cape Coast debacle. Yeah. I had to drive from Cape Coast all the way down. That's another story. I sat down like this, almost dozing. When he looked at me, he saw my name written on my shirt, my garment. He just said, my brother. <laughs> wow. My brother. It woke me up. Kicked out all the sleepness, sleepiness from my eyes. <laughs> and I moved up to him. That is a historic moment. He embraced love, me. <laughs> Really? He embraced me. Wow. And he told me, in the full glare of everybody, that your song propelled me on to victory. Wow. That's what he said. It was captured by the British press, the American press, and even the New York Times. Covered it. Covered this and said the only gift Obama took out of Ghana. When he arrived, they gave him kente. They gave him stools, a stool like that, and so many different things. He took only the CD that bore his name in the music. New York Times reported this. In fact, Bafu Bonnie had told me, but when New York Times published it, I realized that, wow, he valued it so much. And the New York Times also published that he was dancing right from Ghana to America to the music. So and so for me, that was great. <laughs> wow. So, so how, how, how does all that feel, man? I mean, that's... That's, that's historic. Yes, it is. It is. And I feel very good about it, especially that I made a song that I did not really, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, it came out and it became bigger than all the songs I had ever released. Wow. Those that I took my time to compose, mm -hmm. instrumentation, mm -hmm. this one came up and it gave me so much mileage all over. The interviews were so much, people, new friends, old friends resurrected, everybody was coming around. And it made me feel so good again as an African and also as a Ghanaian. Mm. And I tell this story every time to the youth. What is yours can never be taken away from you. It might delay, but it will certainly come to you. They prevented me from going. They did. And ha, right at the place when Obama came and we presented the CD, Bafu Bonnie quickly came up to me and said, give me one of the CDs. How many do you have? I said, I have five. He took one and the DJ started playing it there. Would you believe that the same people who were preventing me from coming to see Obama were coming up to me to ask me if I had the CD on sale there for them to buy? Wow. So that they would be able to give to Obama to autograph. The people that were preventing you. The same you. people right there. Yep. Yep. They came up to me. Do you have any more CDs? Uh, we want to buy. How much is this? Wow. 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 Well, so that, that was it. Obama moment was very great. And from that time, I walk in and out of America. I like how you I call once. it. The Obama moment. Obama yes. moment. Yes. That's fantastic. And yeah. man, but and you, you, you've been, how do I put it? Very vocal. I remember years ago, years ago, when I, I wonder I was on radio, there was something I used to say. Tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And I said, well, sometimes I listen, I say, you are saying what you think is true. Let the chips fall where they may. I hear you're, you, you're almost attacked at the oh, studio. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Somebody attempted to. Yes, 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 yes. Well, a brother came in there. I was on fire, on heat as usual, doing my thing. And then all of a sudden, the uh, lights in the studio went off. All the machines went off. And I was beginning to get angry because producer was not coming in to tell me, oh, this is the problem. And I thought that the generator had gone off. Doom so, doom so. Then I was angry waiting. Then he came rushing in. He said, somebody came here shouting your name. Uh, 
and he was panting. Please go under the table. Go under the table. He's going oh, to the put person was in the house. He was in oh, the house. premise. Yeah. Yes, he came in there with a knapsack, a bag behind him. And he broke security, entered and went into the engine room. Because when I'm in the studio, I normally like to keep it dark. Because I go into some moods that I don't want anybody to recount. So I put so on you want all the light. dark. Dark. Pitch dark. So all the time we're hearing you. I am in pitch darkness. Under the influence. <laughs> yes. Always. Every time. Dark. I don't see anybody. I don't want to see people moving around because when you move around, you distract me. I want to imagine that one million people are listening to me and I'm addressing them. So Ooh. when I hear somebody tap me, you take me out of that world or I have to take off my headphone. It takes me time to get into the groove again. So they know and they don't bother me. When it went off, I was off the mood. And this was it. So brother was up there destroying things. He jumped from the first floor. The police was called to come in because there was an intruder. When he realized that the police came, he tried to escape and he was shot. They shot him? They shot him. Unfortunately, he was shot. So the security people took me away. And when I came back after, oh, where's the guy? They said they're taking him to the hospital. Uh, thankfully, he hadn't died. But he was there. Then we heard again that he had escaped from the hospital. And uh, he was something. Some interesting stories. So up till now, East Legon police has not been able to tell us anything tangible. Nothing. So the and last thing was that he has escaped from escaped. the hospital. You feel safe? They said he came out beating up the doctor. He, after he, he gained consciousness, he was beating the doctor on duty in a police hospital. And he was not chained to his bed. A man who attempted to kill somebody, whatever it was. Mm. Well, I always feel safe, honestly. Because for some reason, I believe I don't walk alone, honestly. I've always felt safe. Anywhere I go, I believe I don't walk alone. And before anything happens, for some reason, I'm whisked out of the place. So uh, I believe I'm doing the work of the Most High and I'm doing the work for the people. The day that I stop doing this work is the day that I will feel unsafe. Mm. So as long as I am on this road, I feel as safe as I can. Black <laughs> Rester. I hear you born Abu Bakr Mohammed. Abu Bakr Ahmed. That's right. Ahmed. Ahmed. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Where? Where were you born? I was born in Tamale uh, on Monday, the second of uh, September, 1974. My mother told me it was 7:20 p.m. and I weighed 5.5 kilograms when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 1974. 74. Wow. So that, that 46. In <laughs> fact, I wish I was. I wish I was, but I understand why you say that. <laughs> and we've taken a lot of inspiration from people like you. In fact, listening to you on radio and listening to you talk with so much passion. In fact, uh, I've said it time and again. This is not the first time I'm saying it. So with that passion, some people have to take that anointing and be able to, it's like a relay race. Mm, mm. When one person falls, that's the end of the race. But if he hands over the baton before he falls, the race continues. Mm. That is why this race is continuing. I mean, look at the longevity of the KSM show. Some people started listening to this show when they were five. Today they are 24. <laughs> Some are even getting to 30 now. <laughs> the show is growing bigger and better. No matter how young the host is. <laughs> Black Rasta. Yes. Your, your, your parents are both around? Yes, uh, my mom passed on, unfortunately, this is the third year. Okay. In fact, I was in the U.S. at that time. I had just returned from uh, University of Central Missouri, UCM. Mm, mm. And um, I came down preparing to go to the University of North Carolina, mm. Asheville. And uh, the message came in. I was shocked because oh. she was so young. She was not How old sick. Is she? How old was she? My, my mom passed at the age of about 64. 64. If she was alive, she would have been 67. Oh, and my that goodness. for me is quite young. Yeah. You yeah. know, she just went away like, mm. like that. When she heard I was teaching at the university, 
she was so happy. She didn't really like the Rasta, <laughs> reggae, singing, <laughs> ja, and you know, she wanted academia. Yeah. Because she herself was uh, a teacher. Okay. My father to a teacher. So they pushed me into education. Mm. In fact, when they heard that I was getting the degrees and still going on to also get, in fact, my two sisters both are PhD holders, far younger than me, and they oh. keep pushing me to wow. also grab mine. Wow. I should have had mine earlier, but we keep postponing what we call deferment <laughs> to be able to do things. <laughs> I see. So what does your father do? He's retired now or he's... My father is retired and uh, he's not too well right, right now. He's in Tamale there. He's quite old. He's about 77 right now. Mm. And uh, he's, he's, he's quiet mm. he's in, mm. in Tamale. Mm. And he likes to listen to radio mm. and watch TV uh, and all that. Does he listen yeah. to you? Oh, he can't catch you there. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember, <laughs> you know, some time ago he listened and he told me that, well, keep on with the fire. Keep on with the fire. Yeah, keep on. They used to be frightened at the beginning. But when they realize that, well, it's nothing but the facts mm -hmm. and we mean well. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the show, when I started, I tell them we don't like to criticize. But if we must criticize, we criticize because we want to build. Mm, that, mm, that's 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 mm, it. Mm. Some people will be offended. Even if you lock yourself up in a room and sleep all year round, some people will still be offended. Yeah. You yeah. see, for yeah. me, I believe in achieving and dying young than staying so old and achieving nothing. <laughs> it's better to die young, achieving something, than to die old like Morticella. Achieving nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all about the achievement, the pedigree, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not the degree. The pedigree and not the degree. Not the degree. <laughs> Brackers, are you dating? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I'm married twice. Yeah, oh, uh, why twice. did I even jump straight to dating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was trying to. Uh, oh, yes. You have two wives, or you married two times? I married two times. You married two times. Two times. Uh, yes. My first marriage landed, lasted ten years, and the pretty beautiful woman passed what? on. She died. Oh, she died. Yes. Okay. She was called Sakina. Okay. Because of that, I made a nice song for her. Anytime I play it, I see the stars dancing. Really? Yeah. I what? never, never knew that I love you so. Telling you pack up and gun gun so. I never knew that I love you so, Sakina. Telling you pack up and gun so. Come back to me, oh sweet Sakina. I am empty without your love. Come back to me, oh sweet Sakina. I am empty without your love. Sakina, 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 Sakina. Sakina, 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 oh, Sakina, 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 Sakina. All right, all right. <laughs> that was the first one. Yes, that was the first one. And the, the second one? Yeah, the second one is still around. She, 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 <laughs> <laughs> she's your current wife. Yes, that's my current wife okay, right now. Okay, okay. Sakina passed on in 2012. Okay. Two years after that, to God be the glory. Another rape was afforded me, and uh, she is presently uh, the CEO of the home. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And how many uh, employees? Uh, well, employees, <laughs> let me say, um, we have four now. You have four? Four beautiful ones. Two with Sakina and two with the new one. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. Shows of love, man. <laughs> boys, girls, and Mr. Sakina had two boys for me, or for us. And the new one has two uh, females. Oh, wow. So two males, two females. Wow, wow. <laughs> Black Rasta, y'all! Black Rasta! More fire! <laughs> wow, man. I mean, it's, it's been so, so, so great having you here, man. Ah, my pleasure. You, you have so much fire. Ah, wow. Is it, is it a, how do you call it? Is it natural high? Yes, so many people have asked me this. In fact, I am naturally high. <laughs> if I tried to add some other high, high to it, it would be disastrous. In fact, I would be the most high. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to remain just this high. You have to be just this high. KSM, what gives me my high is the passion to see the change. I travel to South Africa. For now, almost every time I'm in South Africa, pursuing whatever I'm doing there. And I see the institutions work. 
I have a brand new album here. It's called Timbuktu by Road. Oh. This album, I took to South Africa. An immigration lady helped me to pack my bag and everything. And when I was going away, I gave her this as a gift. She said, I'm sorry, I can't take it, sir. Just give me the title. I'll go to iTunes and buy it. My work does not permit me to take this. I'm so sorry. I took it away. I was with my brethren Fellini. He said, he can always testify to that. But when I get to Ghana, people rather ask me for money. Yeah. When I get to Nigeria, yeah. they ask me if I have something in my bag for them. I want to see the institutions change. I grew up as a youth in turbulent situations. I don't want the youth to grow up in that. I have so much passion and love for the youth. Sometimes it makes me cry all night. Sometimes I just sit on my bed like this, eight hours. I'm just thinking about how I'll be able to direct the youth. Mm. Our president is full of lies. It's so terrible. And the more we try to massage and try to put makeup on these lies, we will continue to sink deeper like the Titanic. Today, exactly one year, he said he was building, building 88 hospitals. They are telling us that they cannot even find land in some of the districts to build the hospitals. Did you plan that you are going to build the hospitals without land or are you going to build them in the skies? It is unfortunate. We have the same president who tells us that he's fighting Galamse, yet in Ghana, Galamse is most popular than Kwame Nkrumah. <laughs> you go around the world and all people are thinking about is they want to come to Ghana and they see it as a pride. They don't know that the people are coming to take advantage of us. It's so easy to come here and slap anybody and go free. It's so easy here to go and steal our minerals. It's so easy here yeah. for you to marry the youngest girls you can get, even if you are 99. In America, you cannot do that. Here you come, you get them, because everything here is cheap. And they think that that is something good they have bequeathed to us. I'm trying to open the eyes of the youth to see what I did not see 20 years back. And whenever I talk about this, I get so emotional. Because the other day, I was just 18. Today, I'm 46. There is no time. I look at these people and all they are telling us is nothing but lies. Borrowing money left, right and center. Yet they tell us that Africa beyond aid. Ghana beyond aid. You go to Switzerland and tell the Swiss people that our oh, cocoa, we are not going to sell to you anymore in the raw form. We are going to process it and blah, blah, blah. You make all the boastful statements and walk away. A few weeks later, the same Swiss, the same European people call you and tell you that, hey, Galamse has destroyed your cocoa. Now China is giving us cocoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hear the, 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 the public affairs manager of Cocoa Board saying, oh, because Ghana is located along latitude 0, oh, 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 and latitude oh, 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 and the rain mm -hmm. is uh, these millimeters, and the sunshine and the tropics favors our cocoa, and so we can. China doesn't have that. They cannot uh, sit back and say, Lord, God have mercy. They've forgotten that there's something called the greenhouse effect. They have forgotten that now you can have artificial rain. They have forgotten that where Tetequashi took that cocoa from, in Fernando Po, today called Bioko, there's not a single plant of cocoa there anymore. Things change like the ticking of the clock. They don't know, KSM. I'm trying to let the youth know that they don't have to be found fooled by these guys in coat and tie. They don't mean well for them. That is why I get so passionate and I get so high to the point that when I spill these things out, I take them off my chest and thankfully the youth are picking up the vibes. You borrow every day. The money you borrow, you have a cut because you own data bank or you are part of data bank. We can't say it because there's a, a, a culture of silence. This man just spoke about it. I mean, Sam, Sam Jonah. Jonah. Just spoke about it and the whole country is shaking. The truth can no longer be said. You fought against VAT only for you to come and increase VAT. You told us that you were giving us free water and free electricity. That you came back and said somebody had to pay for that and you are taxing us to pay. What kind of gift is paid for? You give me a gift and I pay you for the gift? Mm -hmm. That is why I pulled out of all these uh, awards competition. Because they call you to come for the award and they ask people to vote and pay money. In other words, they are buying the award. I mm. remember when uh, 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 RTP was going, put, put you in a certain category. Years back, the first edition, 
You told them point blank KSM and I honor you for that. I cannot compete with my children. Please, let the youth compete. Let them be there and let, let them come and support them. And everybody wants an award. And we can do anything dirty to stay in power. I'm trying to take the youth out of it. I'm glad how you ended and it is working because that's what we need. That new mindset, a new youth that will create the new Ghana. One more time for him, man. One more time. <laughs> oh, I told you, man, it's going to be an exciting thing. Well, Black Rasta, thank you so much. My pleasure. The, the fire never left you. And you it, know. Looks, it looks like you're not, you're not growing. <laughs> In fact, every year I meet you, it looks like there's a secret. Now I see where the secret is. Uh, where's the secret? Cactus. Cactus is the secret. Just oh love it. <laughs> Folks, we had Black Rasta in the house, and uh, it's been an exciting evening for me. Really, really, really. And I'm thankful. And all the youth out there, listen, we need you to change your mindset because Ghana belongs to you. You are the future. Start now thinking right. Black Rasta, ja bless. Bless it. All bless right. It. Black Rasta, do you know how I sign off? Yeah. We are out of G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>